Hello and welcome to uh, another episode of Ashley Hayden's Political Breakdown. We've moved venues after I was evicted from my previous home because the landlord didn't want to pay mortgage. So now we're in the castle and that's where we're going to be in future. Uh, my guests this week are someone who hasn't turned the fuck up yet and... You have to uh, introduce Alistair, yourself. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Alistair Becker King, hello. Should have told you that at the start. Yeah, really. yeah, it would, was, have it would really have helped issue. if you told me that before we started, yeah. but that's not I, a I, I, Normally I do, I give rules, <laughs> but we're in, a, we're in a new venue and I missed it. Um, it's all right. So uh, what this is, very simply, is a show about the week's news where I try not to lose my mind at the state of it all. So what news stories have you brought? Ah, uh, Brexit. Yeah? I'm sorry, it, well... It's, the thing is, and the problem with this whole, the problem with today is that it's the, it's the 19th of October around yes. about half one. Yes. And the main news story of the day is probably going to happen at about half two today. That's when they're voting on the left wing amendment. Which is when they're voting, yes. yeah. So, so we don't know, we don't know what's going on. I mean, we have to record two versions of this <laughs> podcast with different outcomes. I would More than two, because there's about, there's about six different ways this could go, but whatever one it is, it's going to be depressing. I wouldn't even record different ones. I'll just do all the different ways without recording them separately. So we just do yeah. <laughs> just yeah. What we need is sort of qu quantum superimposition of different possible outcomes. So well, the the outcomes are uh, the Letwin Amendment. That's the big amendment of the day. Yeah. So uh, which could mean pushing it back. Putting pushing the decision, so that could be we could be we could decide today to sort of rub shit all over our, our face. Yes. Or we could do it in January <laughs> instead. Because yeah, that's if, the Letwin amendment, yeah. if I understand correctly. If we vote for the Letwin amendment, the Letwin amendment is there to uh, say we need to actually look at what you're offering. Which I, I mean, if the one thing that annoys me about this, it's being made to agree with Oliver Letwin. Yes. Who I who I don't like. But no. now he seems reasonable. I'm on his side. It's like, go Letwin. I feel weird about it's, that. I mean, he has, he has worded it in such a way that says, listen, if you want a deal, fantastic, mm. but do you trust this government? Because if you want a deal and don't trust this government, vote for this amendment, and then... Well, he's positioned himself in favour of leaving with a deal. Yes. Um, but just... Uh, 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 sort of the tr trying to please everyone, I guess, but let's just scrutinise it a bit more carefully, which I, I, I it mean, does sound reasonable. The idea of, right, you've got four hours. Here you go, four hours on this. The, arguably the biggest thing to, uh, that's going to happen in this country for ages. Like four hours and you get to decide. It's pointless. I often find, though, when you make a decision quickly, it's better than mulling it over. In my no, life. Uh, I mean, that's... <laughs> Don't become a politician. That would be the suggestion at that point. No, but you know what I mean? If, if you have to sort of, especially if you have to write something, just dashing it off quickly is sometimes better than sitting pouring over it. I've noticed that about your work. Ah. <laughs> 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 oh. Ah. Oh. No, you're right. In this, in this one situation, thinking carefully about it might be the correct choice. I mean, because <laughs> once a let, if, if Letwin is uh, voted in, then what's that going to happen straight away is going to uh, enact the Ben Act. Yeah. And now the Ben Act is forcing Boris Johnson to go to the uh, EU and beg for an extension, or request an extension. Now, if we do that, it's either going to be a second referendum or uh, a um, an election. Do you have a particular <laughs> view on which order that should be? I'm... I've never been terribly enthusiastic about a second referendum, and all the people I know who are live in London. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, imp it's impossible to spend any time in sort of political Twitter without saying, what did I see yesterday? Someone saying, uh, if Labour don't oppose Brexit, they're going to be destroyed at the next election. And it's like, uh, you know that Brexit is popular. Like, it's still popular. Uh, it, it's no, popular I mean, in lots of parts of the country, and uh, Labour represents there, some I of mean, those parts of the country. I would argue that there hasn't been a poll for the past 17 months that hasn't had uh, Remain as the uh, leader. The, well, it's certainly if we're going Remain versus No Deal versus Deal. Remain versus remain, leave. Remain versus leave. Yeah. It's just that in the same way, it, it's a sort of a flip of a general election. In a general election, uh, the, the, the law changes and you have to accurately, accurately report what the Labour Party does and says. Yes. And so Labour becomes startlingly more popular for a period because newspapers have to stop lying about them. 
the, there's no such law for a referendum. So, oh, so no. if we if we have another referendum, there is absolutely nothing. Or obviously, there there are laws. They just don't seem to matter. There's, there's, there's no reason, I think, to be confident that Remain will win if it's a second referendum. How about, instead of calling it a second referendum, call it a first referendum on stuff that we actually know? Well, that's it, which, which will seem like a fix to, to leavers, because if, if you're voting for three options, deal, a deal, no deal, or Remain, obviously Remain will win, because the leavers will be split between, deal, uh, between no deal and deal. So it's a guaranteed win for Remain in that case. So, uh, that, no. so I think that will be perceived by, by Brexit supporters as a, as a fix, I, even I, though I think it's reasonable, obviously. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the fundamentals that we miss in society and one of the reasons why it's so fucked today is we seem to no longer believe that you're able to change your opinion based on new information. <laughs> yes, it's a character weakness, isn't it? It is. And you don't go, well, this, this is the fundamentals of, of growing as a person. You have yeah. to be able to change your mind. And what, because the thing is, is politicians, they're allowed all the time to change their minds. And this is, this is what uh, uh, leavers uh, go on uh, all the time. And if we're going to leave, fine. I've got no qualms. Mm. Oh, I mean, I've got a lot of qualms with leaving, but if we're going to do it, do it honestly. That's my main care. Yeah, I mean, I, I after the uh, after the referendum, I think it's it's not unreasonable to think that it has to be honoured to some extent. I don't think it. I don't think it. I think it's been it tried can, for three years. Yeah, to be honoured. I, well, I mean, I think there's a there's a sort of Norway plus thing we could have gone for had we not been wankers about it, whereby we say, okay, basically we stay in the EU, we keep all the stuff we've got, we just don't get to make any decisions because we don't send over MEPs but we, we stay as close as we possibly can but without having a say yeah but imagine that would imagine be preferable. leavers dealing with oh we've got no sovereignty we've got nothing else now we don't even have a say in the laws that we have to fucking deal with yeah, I mean, it, they it, would it, all which is why it was unpalatable to them and that's why we haven't had that choice because it was uh, it was essential that we end freedom of movement and all the other stuff which is the good thing about being in the EU every deal that we're going to do in future be it with India be it with China be it with the US one of the major points, especially China and India, uh, especially India more than any, one of the major points that is going to be in that deal is free movement. India are going to think, and this is, this is what I, I said to you before we start recording this. When we actually go for free trade agreements, which we claim that we want to do mm. with all of these countries, they're going to bend us over. Well, we've always been huge fans of free trade agreements, as all rich countries have, historically. Yes. But I think we might in this century find out what a free trade agreement is like if you are the poorer country yes in that agreement exactly and it might not be as brilliant for us no oh free trade agreements can have wonderfully regenerative effects on ailing economies but i think there are there are as we've seen many times social consequences to vastly increased inequality and and rapidly changing industrialization. Yeah, I mean, one of the major issues that we have in this uh, country with regards to economy that is uh, ignored somewhat is our um, production, uh, our productivity. Our productivity is incredibly low. But we work longest hours. No, Greece, uh, in Europe, Greece work longer hours yeah, than we do. Yeah, that is true, yeah, but, but that's uh, not the stereotype, but, uh, yeah, so it's, I mean, that's, it's that. mad as when you, when you look at it and go, Greece are the ones that work longer than us. Like, why? Because they, <laughs> they don't pay any tax. <laughs> they do now. That, that's, that's the other, all of our stereotypes for the Greeks are out of date. Um, so now that it's quite onerous. So um, they are paying I, they tax are, now. They are post-crash post uh, paying tax. Or, or rather, at least they're obliged to. I assume rich people still aren't. Um, politicians mean, all shifted their money out of the country just before uh, anything. All, move, all moved it to Cyprus, all hit, where I think. Russia own. Russia basically owns Cyprus. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, uh, Cyprus has a lot of uh, forex companies in there. Uh, and the North Cyprus, which is the Greece Cyprus, I think, or the Southern Cyprus, one of the two, the Greek side. Um, I thought it was the North part. Uh, they have a lot of uh, uh, forex companies in there under CySEC regulation, which is the Cypriot regulation that is shit, really. It means you can do whatever you fuck you like. You can't get any money back and everything else. It's not. It's not like the FCA, um, and uh, it's the Russians who own a lot of those companies, 
and so there's a big Russian influence in uh, Cyprus. Mm. So. Oh, which, which brings me on to the other news story I uh, saw, which is, I, but I can't pronounce the name, I don't know how to pronounce the name of the American politician it involves. Uh, Hillary Clinton accused several people of being Russian uh, agents in a podcast. Did you did you see that? No, I didn't. Yeah, because I, I had to check, and I, I think it's true. I, I'm going to have to look this up now, because if it's not, I'm just repeating fake news. <laughs> like, I totally believe the Donald Trump said that um, Italy and America have been allies for thousands of years. Oh, well, yeah, that's that. But that Whereas was, what he actually said was, we have a common history which goes back thousands of years, yeah. which isn't stupid. It's just white supremacy, obviously. What is he talking about? He's just talking about white culture. Italian people weren't even white 50 years ago. Come on. I, uh, I want to be clear which thing I'm angry about. It's not <laughs> that we are treating Italian people as white. <laughs> it, sounds not, like it, it, it sounds it did like... Sound, <laughs> I realised it sounded like the, the Irish and the Italians count as white now. What's next? <laughs> it that's it, not it sounds like meant. you walk along with a fucking Dulex colour chart going, <laughs> not white, mate. Not white. This, at best, cream. If you can get a tan, you're not in the gang. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> it's just gingers. Ah, uh, the no, pure race. <laughs> <laughs> a ginger person couldn't be racist. No, um, we're the history's greatest victims. Oh, that's that's what I understand. Yeah. You know. <laughs> no, so um, uh, so I think it's I think her. Certain, uh, uh, I'm gonna have to look it up. I think it's uh, Tuesley or Tulsi. Um, she because her and um, I think uh, Elizabeth Warren of being of being Russian assets. Elizabeth Warren. I think I think what I'm going to have to check this because I, I, mean, I don't want to get the geez. facts wrong. Because the idea you talk and say some facts for a while, and well, I'll make sure this is true. The idea of going after Elizabeth Warren at the moment, uh, Hillary Clinton needs to really pick what side she's on. Because if if she's being honest and she's she's saying facts and that Elizabeth Warren is indeed a Russian asset, then she has hidden that very well. She has played, I mean, she's in the wrong party to start off with. She seems to have some <laughs> borderline uh, democratic views on the head towards socialism with the idea of getting rich people to actually pay some tax. I mean, she's, she's going up against Bernie. Although there was interesting, the polls came out uh, a little while ago saying that uh, both Biden and Warren were below Trump if they're against each other, mm. but Sanders was above. That's interesting. Um, so she, uh, Clinton was a little cleverer than, than I have said. She, she, um, what she said was, I'm not making any predictions, but I think they've got their eye on somebody who is currently in the Democratic primary and are grooming her to be the third party candidate, Clinton said. She's the favorite of the Russians. So she, uh, she didn't name uh, t uh, uh, Tulsi Gabbard, but she's the one it's most likely to be yeah, but, I she's mean, talking about. Gabbard isn't so she's not anywhere. been quite as uh, Trumpian as I thought she was yeah. in her wild accusations. But Gabbard isn't going to fucking get anywhere. Well, in, in fairness, this was the first time I heard who she was. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I like her based on it. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, I mean, the, the Russians are... Uh, I think they've signed a new deal recently. I, be I beg your pardon. She accused Jill Stein of being a Russian asset, not Elizabeth Jill Warren. Jill Stein, the not Green, the the Green Party candidate, which which makes more much more sense than her accusing a, a, another Democrat. Uh, so so her idea is going after. I mean, the, the, the Russians aren't that useless. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> Spend all of that time. It's like in this country, finding out that Caroline Lucas is a Russian spy. They're going, ah, oh, why though? But out think of, of all of the all of the information she could have leaked. Why? All of the all of the crucial secrets. I mean, the the Green Party are very much just happy to be there. I like the Green Party. Uh, I, I, I like fan. Caroline Lucas. Um, I, th I think Caroline Lucas is one of the uh, only MPs that have shown something that's a modicum of uh, competence. I think I think there's a real stigma attached to being a Russian asset these days, and we just need to get over that because we just need to get used to them running things behind the scenes and stop stigmatizing it. I, I mean, I wouldn't have them run things behind the scenes, mainly because look at how well Russia's actually going. <laughs> oh, the, uh, the, another horrible news story uh, with no humorous potential. Uh, I mean, uh, let's, let's, let's have a go then. Um, 
Well, t uh, some uh, st student anarchists uh, cut their wrists in court uh, this week. Um, so they're being, they're basically, some of them are as young as 19. Um, where, where was this? They're, they're in Russia. Ah, oh, yes. So they, uh, they're just part of a, a sort of a, a, a WhatsApp group of sort of saying, hey, we should do political stuff, right? And it, it seems like young young radicals doing young radical stuff uh, and being and now facing prison one of them is already under home arrest um and it's just sad it's uh, i mean I, you know, I, I, not not to say that i'm uncritical of anarchism and uh and no they're just kids they're just they just seem uh, like kids. The question, the question comes with because there's a lot of children doing a lot of stuff at the moment. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't mean that radicalized young people can't ever do anything bad. It no. just doesn't look like these people did anything particularly bad. But that goes along with like uh, extinction rebellion. They've been yes. in the news a lot this week. They have been, and they've managed to fuck up the uh, good stuff that they did do. They've gone full Peter. Yeah, uh, they've they've Morrisseyed it. Yeah. I think. Uh, and this is they win the idea of trying to uh, push across the stories of uh, climate change. Good, climate change is a real thing. Yeah, we do need to do something about it. Yeah, pissing off people is not necessarily the way to go well, about I it. I, I have some tolerance for pissing off people because most protesters in history have yeah. been really annoying. Yeah. And, and progress is annoying if you don't want it to happen. Yes, exactly. And like the suffragettes, total wankers. Yes. Like, what if you had a bet on that horse? Annoying. <laughs> That's one of the bits I would ask you to cut out if this was... <laughs> <laughs> Never yeah, mind. no editing. Um, yeah, that's what happens when you just say what you think without... <laughs> No, and I'm going to have to speak more slowly. <laughs> My point is, every... <laughs> They're all annoying. I'll tell you the worst thing that they did with regards what, to... Not that? only if you've got a bet on it, but that horse was shot afterwards. Was it? So the horse died too? Yeah. Now the, now the Peter are angry at the suffragettes. Yeah. Uh, the, the, I think the thing that pissed me off... Uh, I, obviously, the, the, it's unfair for the whole movement to be tarred with the gluing yourself to trains in Canning Town thing because most people didn't support that. Yes. Uh, and it was a small group of people who thought it was a good idea. It's obviously very self-righteous, but the problem with being right is it's very easy to be self-righteous when you are also right. Yes. And it's very hard to notice when you're being self-righteous when you are obviously right, as they, broadly speaking, are. Yes. And... I think the thing that annoyed me was them making comparisons with Rosa Parks. Because oh, yeah. The personal courage it takes to do what she did in no way compares to... And it gives you a sense of the, the, the arrogance and the, and the sort of sense of martyrdom that they're seeking, I think. Yes. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's exasperating. And ju just a reminder of how the the people running extinction rebellion are, are like me sort of middle class white self righteous people i mean there's, with there's a, a, a narrow perspective there's a constant talk with regards to extinction rebellion oh they're just middle class so they're doing something i mean this is the thing cuz the problem is they say well why aren't the working class doing anything oh cuz uh, they cuz they have to yeah cuz they're busy but that's the idea that the middle class aren't mm. like the middle class aren't also they well, they're, not, they're not taking time off they're young people and retired people they're, yeah. that's what they are and uh, which are two groups that people often don't listen to yes um so you know good for them teaming up ideally solving mysteries yeah it's, <laughs> it sounds great i mean well a student uh, in an oap go yeah. around the country pissing people off well, I mean, I, I mean, they are trying to solve the mystery of why we don't care that the world's dying. I think the big problem I have with the with the criticism of them is that we don't understand how hypocrisy works. So, like when uh, when Bill Cosby says, "Hey, black people, this is how you should be living your lives," and then it turns out he's yes. been living his life in an extremely unacceptable yes. way, the hypocrisy of that undermines his moralizing. Exactly. Yes. Absolutely. But when when you when you're flying to somewhere to talk about climate change, the fact of climate change is unaffected by you being on a plane. Exactly, because it's a fact. Because hypocrisy doesn't change the facts. So maybe you shouldn't have flown in that plane. But you, you, you but hypocrisy doesn't affect facts. And we we act as if you're not allowed to say something that's true if you have in, 
in any way been involved in the thing that well, you're talking this about. This is the thing with uh, the constant, oh, they're, they're just middle class, they're just middle class, they're just like middle class, but that doesn't stop <laughs> the facts of the world is dying. Like, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter if they're working class, middle class, they could all be upper class. I mean, they're not going to be because isn't burning children fun. Um, <laughs> the weird thing, did you see, the, the Guardian did a... Uh, a breakdown of, uh, uh, of parliamentary votes on, on things related to climate change. Yes. And it's, people, people have said to me, why, why do you have to politicise climate change? Why does it have to be about politics if it's just science? Well, because, because the Conservative Party consistently voted against good yeah. ideas and for bad ideas when it comes to climate change, and the Labour Party the opposite. And the Lib Dems, to their credit, bang in the middle. Oh yeah. Um, the I mean, the Lib Dems. Joe Swinson is the, like, one of the only ostensibly centrist people to the left of... Zach Goldsmith on the chart. One of the fascinating things is seeing famous environmentalist Zach Goldsmith. He's like sixty percent good. He's he's almost bang in the middle. It's just that he's great compared to every other conservative. What's wonderful? Which about is interesting because uh, you think of him as being oh he's super super up on climate change because that's his no no his I, don't, brand. I don't I don't no, think no. that when I say you I mean papers oh, yes. <laughs> we <laughs> think of Zach Gold he has positioned himself as being super environmentalist. And you realise, yeah, you're worse than the entire Labour Party. <laughs> I the think nicest Tory is worse than all Labour. I think that uh, when it comes to Zach Goldsmith, I only remember him as being a big fan of Bollywood. Um, that's what he said. When is that he, uh, when he was trying to win? Yeah, when, it, when he was running the racist campaign against uh, 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 Sadiq Khan. Yeah. So I'm a big fan of Bollywood. And then he was asked if he uh, was his favourites, and he couldn't name any. It was fucking beautiful. Mm. Uh, what about, I like that one with the dancing. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? Want, you know? You know where they start talking, and then all of a sudden they turn into dance? That's my favourite <laughs> one. That's my, that's my favourite one. Yeah, well, <laughs> Slumdog Millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Oh, Big fan of Indian cinema. He would have fucking said that as well. I really <laughs> like. I really like Slumdog Millionaire. That would be my favourite one, honestly. You know, I, I really like um, the Last Airbender. Like you know, you know. <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not only stop it. That's an awful film. Always <laughs> enjoyed the Apu-themed episodes of The Simpsons. <laughs> really resonated with me. Anything by uh, M. Night Shyamalan, really. Uh, <laughs> it's my, my favourite Bollywood film. Like, um, uh, can, I, can I admit something? I really like his films. And it's not cool to like his films anymore. That's because so like many them. of them are very bad. Oh, well, they're not, though. I don't get why people don't like them. <laughs> I've, got, I've got reasonably highbrow film tastes. <laughs> and this is my... This yeah, is we're my, not editing that out either, My blind mate. spot. <laughs> I like his films. Yeah, but at the end of the recording, I'm going to say, I actually don't. <laughs> and everyone's going to be like, Whoa! <laughs> no, no I, do like I do like his films. I do like his films. What's I love a film. I lo it got a twist at the end. Brilliant. What's not I mean, to like? It's just... Right. Uh, so, in other things in today's news. From M. Light Shyamalan <laughs> to someone else who's awful. Um, <laughs> Big fan of his Richard news. Huckle. Uh, he was known as the gap year paedophile. Uh, was stabbed to death in prison this week. Right. Uh, after being handed, well, he was handed 22 life sentences with a minimum uh, term of 35 years in 2016 for abusing up to 200 children. I didn't know he was called the gap year paedophile. Fair play to him for taking a break, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cracking joke. <laughs> I thought it, I thought it was okay, <laughs> and I was expecting more. Um, and it, There's no it, audience. I did here. see that. Yeah, I forgot that there wasn't an audience. Um, but, um, now, with regards to uh, this time, of course, he's detestable, vile, awful, and he deserves to spend his rest of his life in prison. Yeah. The stabbing aspect. What does that tell us about the safety? of uh, our prisoners. Should we care about the safety of prisoners? Should we be happy that he was stabbed whilst he was in prison? I think it's, I'm, I'm not saying my heart goes out to him, um, but I do think, it, it's, it's funny to me that uh, prison murder for paedophiles and, uh, and prison rape for non-paedophiles are considered sort of standard, yes. semi-comic parts of it. Yeah, like that. Not just the oh, it happens, but you know, but actually that that's the like there are there are sort of family films that do a do a prison rape jokes. Yeah, implicitly yeah, as if as yeah. if that's a no as if that's because it's the funniest and most family friendly form of rape. Yeah, because you know, they're going oh well, this is, yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's not bad because it's not happening to us. Yeah, but also we're the, never going to go to prison. The people who go to prison are always always bad. Yes, and that it's part of the punishment. Exactly. And I sort of think 
as we move towards a sort of a, 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 an American system of putting as many poor people in prison as possible, I question Wait, I whether a that can. Oh, you've run out of beer. Yes. Thank you very much. Very kind. I think. I think maybe we shouldn't murder and rape prisoners, and nor should we celebrate. Without wanting to get too moralistic about that, I think it's a bad thing. I because you're you're right, and it's something in comedy that happens a lot. You know, yeah. you go, oh, all the time. Uh, yeah. I mean, you you find it because it goes into a. a even a homophobic stance with regards to rape as well. Because, you know, with uh, prison rape, it's like, ah, oh, he's gay, go to prison, you'll fucking love it. Mm. As though, just because you enjoy sex, it means you enjoy sex with everyone at any time, as long as it's not fucking... Uh, like, yeah. It's it's incredibly, uh, it's incredibly weird and something that uh, comedy as a whole needs to uh, look at. Because this is the thing, I know it's a touch of a tangent, but like uh, yesterday, uh, during the show, I have a bit uh, with regards to how comedy is. Uh, Wait, do you, do you write your stuff then? Yes. Oh right, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to get Ashley back for when you said I didn't prepare. C- carry on. That's, that's not relevant. <laughs> but um, I have a bit on with regards to how uh, comedy is basically the perfect place for a sexual predator. Why is that? Uh, because normally you have like open mics, which are like 11 men and one woman and they're all fucking uh, beta males going around her like she's a fucking gazelle in a Serengeti and they're all <laughs> hyenas going along going oh, oh you're really funny oh yeah yeah you're really good. I've got some bits yeah we could we could, we could do some writing together it would be lovely is yeah that, is that what happens same time touch it touch it touch it <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, because there's, there's, there's every, every so often, I'm not sure about yourself, but I, I hear stories from people about the sexual predators in comedy. I was just, I was just talking uh, with uh, a, a female comic about that yesterday, and she was, she was saying that that we, that we the male comics are less likely to hear it. Yes, because people are less likely to go and, and tell us something in case we're friends with that person and it get exactly that, that usually guy and it gets back to him. Yeah. Because because so we're less trusted and and not always brought into the you know brought into those I suppose they are rumors and it, 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 it we start it's starting to see the 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 the, the double edged sword of rumor which I had yes. always thought rumors universally a bad thing that's that and you think yes but but when someone behaves very badly in a non criminal way don't other people need to know about that. Yeah, and but the thing is, is like there are criminal ways that do and not coming up. There has been or, or a an, number, a, or an unprosecutable, yes, but, but potentially criminal ways. Yes, uh, there what have been a do? number of comedians uh, that are no longer comedians uh, that have been found out to have done stuff, and it all came from rumours to start off with. Mm. Um, there's uh, a lot, and the problem is, is that a lot of them claim themselves to be fucking left wing, and it really does ruin it for everyone else. <laughs> yeah, what's the point of being righteous if someone turns out to be a perv? That's it, you know, going, oh yeah, down with the Tories. At the same time, let's see if we can't get you drunk. I don't trust it. Anyway, the important thing is, we both know who we're talking about, but we're not going to say it. So let's no, carry yes, on. Yes, yes. I mean, just in case they they try to rape me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> attempt to get me drunk. I'd, I wouldn't mind someone attempted to get me drunk. You know, save, I, I mean, I don't know. Save me some I, money. I, nobody else has ever really felt the need to help you get you drunk. <laughs> I've, I've done anything ever, anyway. <laughs> I've got down an awful lot. Well, no, I you started. have actually, and I'm pleased to see that. Anyway, That's very good. Good anyway. for you. People who keep on telling me that like, oh, the first four years I knew you were drunk all the time. So, yeah, but at the same time, I was gigging at awful places. Anyway. Does that mean that your life's got better? No, no, not at all. I just don't <laughs> gig in these places anymore. You know? Okay. No, <laughs> they've stopped booking me. <laughs> <laughs> so much things have got worse, but I'm, I'm really pleased that you're cutting down the booze slightly as well. Good. Oh, right. Next story. Uh, Spain Supreme Court. Uh, they've sentenced nine uh, Catalan separatist leaders uh, to between nine and 13 years in prison for uh, sedition. Sedation? Sedition. Sedition. Sed- hopefully sedition and not sedation. Otherwise <laughs> we've got another Me Too situation on our hands. More, more Cosby's over there. 
Uh, yeah, so this is over the their roles in the independence referendum of 2017. Yeah, it's... I mean, I... I'm... Not a fan of separatism or nationalism in general. Yes, but that's bollocks, isn't it? I mean, it's it's qu- that's it, extremely it, bollocks. It, 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 it does. Like, what did you do? Hold, they held their own fake referendum. <laughs> I mean, that, that's it's, not nine years in prison. Bad, is it? No, it's it's incredible that it it's happening. Uh, of course, the leader of the uh, Catalan Parliament got out beforehand. Uh, and uh, they're in another country at the moment uh, oh, well. doing a, an Assange. Um, <laughs> L- living in a cupboard? <laughs> Being, I couldn't remember what the actual word was, so <laughs> I went for an Assange. <laughs> an Assange. But it's too vague a word. There are other things that could be doing an Assange based on I mean, uh, not yet. Yeah, allegations. No, nothing, nothing in the Me Too movement. That's, what, that's <laughs> not what I'm going on. Although I will say Assange, almost certainly a rapist. Um. <laughs> Sorry, I've just never heard anybody hedge their, hedge their bets and then say almost certainly a rapist in the same sentence. <laughs> uh, oh, you know, you know me, you know, I have a bit of fun with it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, he, he is, he is. Uh, so we, uh, this is just against freedoms, isn't it? What they're doing here. They're, it's it's trumped up charges with people doing uh, things. It has nothing to do with the actual looking for independence. Yeah. Well, this is so, like so trying so to put fucking Sturgeon in uh, well, prison. Like with Scottish independence uh, and sort of Catalan and, and Basque separatists, uh, the, uh, the reason I have some sympathy with them is that they tend to be more left wing. Not because I think. Uh, I, I don't. I'm not convinced by co- uh, small cultural separatist movements because I think there's a, a danger of it playing into um, the well like English nationalism or, or all nationalism Spanish is nationalism. bad all uh, nationalism is bad including including the left wing small we want to go away and set up a nice sort of workers state yeah. nationalism I'm still suspicious I of think that. if you if you've got nationalists in your uh, in your political uh, Name in your party name. It's just it's the same worry I have if you've got Democrat in there. <laughs> well, how do you feel about Workers' Party? Because they, I mean, they're good so and bad in that list. Socialist Workers' Party can go get fucked every which way. Uh, our biter party? I can't. I mean, I don't even know what that is. That's the Nazis. That's the Nazis. Yeah. Well, then, oh, uh, definitely I'm, the worst <laughs> in the list. <laughs> or the Socialist Workers' Party, close. Um, God, I, I just, I, they just bore me to tears. I can't think. I, I, I say, if you were to do a uh, a march against the Socialist Workers Party, they would march with you. <laughs> <laughs> They're everywhere. I think the thing that bothers me, the, the the thing that has always annoyed me about those is when you go on marches for things that are sort of sort of sensible things, like let's let's try and eradicate poverty, which, yes. which is something that, that, that centrists and right-wing people also agree with. Yes. The, the socialist workers will be there trying to claim that march for socialism, which I'm a socialist, but the point of those kind of campaigns is almost everybody agrees people shouldn't live in extraordinarily bad poverty. Yes. Now, socialism may be the way that we should achieve that. It's not, but... <laughs> <laughs> but nice, nice but, try. Claim, but claiming a march like that for socialism is just not reasonable. Well, that, is that not the problem with the left, though? Is that there, there's no, there's no. You said that like, as if there's only one problem with yeah, the left. But like with 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 every left, with every march the left do, comparing the to like a march that the the right or the far right do, mm. there's a reasoning for it. Like I I, I compare it to like. The the far right, especially when they march, it's all for one thing. They're like the the Romans yeah. with the turtle uh, uh, thing, yes. like that. Whereas the left is more like the Gauls, just <laughs> what plucky, funny, just all over the fucking place, going ah, oh, uh, a, v- a variety of body types. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. sound yeah, but let's be the Gauls. Just going They're there, cool. going oh yeah, we're here to uh, we're here to stop TTIP. We're here to save the badger. Like, why are you in the same <laughs> fucking place, mate? This is this, this isn't here for you. Extension Rebellion are like the bard that everybody <laughs> hates. It's really, really bad. Can, I, can you remember what he was called? Um, can't remember what the bard was called. Yeah. yeah, no, I think the analogy is perfect. We are like the Gauls, but you have in no way convinced me that that makes us bad. Okay, no, I, yeah, we're, just, you're right, we're cool, but we can't agree. The, yeah, the inability to having one voice on anything. Yeah. Because if you do not have one voice on something, then it's very difficult to uh, cut through the bullshit. No, one of the things that 
has an irritated me recently is that the, uh, there's a tendency to suggest that the the left don't have a sense of humour about themselves, or that oh, that God. sort of uh, the the quote unquote woke um, right on political uh, leftist is a new thing. And I feel like well, have these people never seen Alan Parker, Urban Warrior, or never yeah. heard of Dave Spart? Or never heard um, Tom Lehrer's folk song army song from like the 50s. Mm. No, well, sorry, it must be the 60s because that's when the folk song thing <laughs> happened. Um, or, or never seen the life of Brian. Like none of the none of the jokes that are being made are new jokes because none of the things that annoying left wing people are doing are new because this sort of yeah. um, what have they done for us business? I mean, the, uh, are, the, yeah. the PFJ splitters. It, it's it's the same phenomenon. Yes, happening in. There's, new there's nothing new, new about uh, all of it. It's just a consistent, same old shit that makes no fucking difference and it's utterly yeah. pointless. Tom Lehrer says in, fo- in the Folk Song Army song, uh, the best thing about a, a folk song is uh, uh, they make you feel so good. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you got to admire the courage of anyone who stands up in a coffee shop and comes out in, in favour of love and peace <laughs> and all the things that everybody hates. <laughs> That's... That's very good. And it's the best joke about virtue signaling you'll hear by a man who'd never heard the phrase virtue signaling because it didn't exist. But, um, but, but there are people who think that virtue signaling is a real major problem and it's just been invented and that it's happening all the time and we've just started satirizing it. It's like, get, pay attention to satire. Everything uh, uh, that people claim is new. Like, the idea of snowflakes that people get offended, that's not new. People have been offended forever. I mean, the, the life of Brian, uh, which I just mentioned, yeah. banned in Ireland. Like, it was a exactly. big deal. Well, I mean, I'll go I mean, before. People, uh, there, there is no doubt at some point when, when we were at fucking Neanderthals and it was only co- communications via paintings. I prefer cave person, actually. <laughs> oh, you're dead. Don't care. Uh, but but they didn't live in cages. In cages w- anyway, it was inaccurate. Uh, 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 oh, then I won't, I won't carry on with this rant then. <laughs> Continue the no, rant, it's fine. You've, you've, it's fine. No, you've, you've ruined it because it was all going to be about paintings <laughs> and a painting of someone <laughs> being eaten this. by a wolf and go, uh, I think you'll find my mum was eaten by a wolf. <laughs> 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 That's where I was going for it, but it's inaccurate and I do not like no, making did, inaccurate rants. They did go in caves. <laughs> they, did went to, they just didn't live in caves in the Flintstones. Why so. not? Uh, it's just that I mean, the Flintstones didn't live in caves. That's true. No, they lived in stone houses. Exactly. Yeah, fair enough. So we were both wrong. In <laughs> I mean, listen, I may not know my Neanderthal. <laughs> I do know my Flintstones, though. <laughs> um, so, Catalan, I think we dealt with Catalan yes. separatists. Um, uh, but we did, we did talk about poverty, and that brings me on to a very interesting uh, thing, because this is according to uh, new research by the OECD uh, and the Centre for uh, City Think Tank. Uh, uh, there are large levels of hidden unemployment in towns and cities across Britain uh, that have been excluded from official government data. Um, and so these are studies uh, found that uh, three million are missing uh, from the uh, headline unemployment rate because, uh, let me read me writing, uh, because they report themselves as economically inactive. Uh, to uh, the government labour force surveys. And so the research suggests that instead of uh, our unemployment figures being 4.6%, it should actually be 13.2%. Well, this is interesting because I, I'm a, f- a reasonably big fan of facts, but I'm very, very bad with numbers, so I forget statistics. Yes. And so it's easy for me to talk about how terrible things are and the fact that we've the, the economy's barely recovered since the 2008 financial crisis yes. and we've, we've sort of lost a decade. Yes. Uh, and... You know, to say, oh, people are underemployed, and we've got, but, 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 but the facts have always said, well, under unemployment is at a record low, and also surveys suggest we're happy, so maybe everything's fine, and lefties like me are just looking for problems. Uh, I mean, surveys suggesting that we're happy means that people don't understand sarcasm, <laughs> and uh, with regards to unemployment, what you have to look at unemployment is uh, what people consider as employed. Mm. Uh, which can be anything. I mean, technically, I have a job. Yes. And yet. Yeah, and yet here we I are on a Saturday. Any, have I ever earned any money or done anything productive <laughs> or useful ever? No, but I mean, it's I mean I stuff like you can returns. work on. Uh, uh, it's you can work like an hour a week mm. and be considered uh, ticked off I as mean, employees. This is this is my 
concerned that, uh, that uh, zero hour contracts and underemployment mask yes un- mask effective unemployment oh certainly they do because this is where, where you get to in a point where uh, if you're uh, it's all well and good having everyone employed but if you do not actually earn enough money to live this is why it's uh, better to look at uh, the number of people in poverty because you've got two thirds of people in poverty are working mm. And so if you've got to a point where you say, well, look, they're, they're employed, yeah, but they still can't afford everything that mm. you would reasonably assume in a first world country that you should be able to afford. Like food, as an example. Mm. If you have to go, for, if my kid going to eat or am I going to eat at the same time, I do need to clock in. Yeah. You're I fucked. I think to, the, to, the, to give them the, give, give the p- people on the right and Tories the most credit possible. I think they genuinely don't believe people are really poor. I think they genuinely don't believe that hard-working people are poor. I, th- I, I think that, that, that all evidence is against them. But f- to hear them speak, I, I really think they deeply believe that if you try hard, you're all right Ooh, in I this mean, country. And I think there are lots of people who that isn't their experience. The idea of a meritocracy is flawed, anyway. The idea you work hard, Why is you being, do... Well, if, if a lot of the things that make you useful are things you're born with. So if you're born as stronger, faster, taller, cleverer, why do you deserve a nicer life? You didn't do anything. You didn't earn any of that. So why do you get a nicer house just because you're cleverer? I don't even understand why people who are more useful deserve to have nicer lives than people who are less useful. I do believe in a meritocracy for the world, which is why we are where we are. So you think we get what we deserve? Uh... To not individually, but as a collective, mm. which is why everything's fucked, because we deserve that. We d- we are having it is less violent than it was in like the Middle Ages, I think. Uh, per, yeah, but if you capita. have to compare it, because this is the thing, like we, you have people, <laughs> you have people go. The latest well, in Brexit is yeah. the Black Death's not happening. So <laughs> but this is it. you have people say like you, you complain about today, and you have people go along going, well, I mean, it's not as bad as it was in the thirties. So if you have to compare it to a, a world war, <laughs> we're still not good. <laughs> If, that, if that's your fucking barometer... Infant mortality's improved. I'm just saying it's not all bad. Recently, infant mortality in this country has gone up. Has it? Yeah. That's what so I meant that's by improved. That's what I, when <laughs> I said improved. It's going up. Let's keep those numbers I'm, moving. <laughs> I made that to a point where someone I mentioned it to me. I said, well, actually, it's going up. Oh, well, keep, keep up to date with your figures. It may go down soon again. But it should do, really. I mean... We we should be. We're also point having sex less, so less sex, less kids, less infant mortality. What better way of are we having sex less or safer? Less oh, I don't know. I mean, me less. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> I was going to say, for, are we basing it on us? <laughs> this might not be representative. It's, it hasn't got any more. It's not got more dangerous. I can tell you that. <laughs> Certainly, the the element of danger is is, is, as distant as ever. (laughs) Bring me a javelin, a marshmallow, and let's do this. (laughs) End of the podcast. I don't think I can continue after that. (laughs) I'm genuinely tearing up a little bit there. (laughs) We need more danger in our role play. (laughs) Why am I always a wizard? <laughs> it's not f- this being typecast. Hey. It's not fair. <laughs> you go online. You start typing in. How do I make a bomb? <laughs> 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 I'm going to go and I'm going to find the biggest, roughest people. Say their hair shit. <laughs> we meet up in thirty minutes and then we start then going. We just go for yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't oh. matter how many people are watching. We're at it. Hopefully, the SWAT team come. I, I have a, a side story that relates yes. to, not quite to poverty, but we're t- talking about sort of being able to pay rent. And it's also c- mostly sad. Uh, a, <laughs> a, a, a Danish man was, uh, uh, seems to have set up a sect on a farm mm-hmm. and has been arrested for, for holding children against their will and for money laundering, which is... The weird thing about people <laughs> who run cults and sectors, they've always got a side hustle, isn't yeah. it? There's always something else, like also drugs or guns, or in this case, money laundering. Um, so, so that's been busted and it's being investigated. So it's in its early stages. So he hasn't, you know, he hasn't been found guilty or anything yet. Um, but the thing that really struck me was that the the the, the farm that he he built the secret room in was a was a rented property, and I'd always assumed that you had to own the freehold if you were going to set up a cult. Because like I'm afraid to put up pictures like oh, yeah. in my flat. 
uh, just the the confidence that you have to have to to run a cult out of a rented property. I mean, it's incredible to put in a secret room in a in a rented property. In a room, I mean, that is you're you're right with regards to like I wouldn't put up a. He's a not picture. getting his deposit back, no. is he? <laughs> After that. <laughs> I have to make sure that they're keeping the deposit. I mean, I'm I'm quite I'm quite touchy when it comes to deposits after being uh, evicted. You've just been evicted, yes. Uh, and uh, I've moved into a new place in in Stepney Green. I'm quite sure one of the people who uh, is in the property is a murderer. Um, <laughs> I'm not willing to say who, just in case they look at it and kill me in my sleep. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a worry. But I kept on saying to the, this new landlord. Like, do you pay your mortgage? Now, that's a very weird question. Not for me, it ain't. You know, <laughs> I've been burnt. Which is ridiculous, because whatever you were paying in rent probably would have paid the mortgage. Oh, yes. So it's ridiculous for them to, anyway. Oh, yeah. It's not oh, right. T- ten, at 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm there, bang at the door, open the door. Uh, we're, uh, we're evicting you today. Oh, oh, yeah. Nice. You've got 10 minutes to pick up your stuff. How very kind of you. <laughs> very kind. So I'm there for 10 minutes to collect my life's... <laughs> my favourite thing is, is reading posts from landlords who think they're having a hard time, like on Reddit. Have you ever seen these? <laughs> they're always doing things like, um, so am I the asshole for, um, sneaking in, for using my key to get into my, uh, this person's apartment and planting drugs and then doing a search? Yes. Because I wanted... To because they're not paying enough rent. And it's like, yes. Yeah, yeah, you are. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you're a landlord, so you were already the arsehole. <laughs> yeah. at the st- before the crime was committed, you were the arsehole. And then a series of increasingly worse things happened. <laughs> and they're like, but I really wanted more money in my defence. <laughs> How long have we got left, Pete? 15. Cool. Beautiful. Enough time to cover lots of stuff. All right. Uh, so, uh, this is bad for a long recording, but I need to blow my nose. I'm sorry. Blow your nose. Vote in five minutes. Vote in five minutes. Are you keeping an eye on it? Will we, can, will it can, you, can you tell us what it is before the end of the recording? Okay. Fantastic. Ah, Caroline Flint. See, it's just the Labour MPs who are going to vote with the government. Like, what's the point of being a Labour MP? What's the point of being the opposition if you vote with, if you vote on this with this government? With, I mean, with this, with Boris Johnson. Is Kate what's Hoey not just the worst? Oh, okay, Kate Hoey. I mean, at, at what point is she Labour? I mean, she hangs out with Farage. Mm. She votes with the Tories. And where's her constituency? Vauxhall. Yeah. So who you, voted like, like sixty percent for Remain? Exactly. At least uh, Caroline Flint, to her, to her credit, is is probably reflecting uh, the wishes of some of her constituents. Yes. So what's yeah? And, uh, and okay, because it's, it's going to be going to be very interesting for the next election because you've got potentially like fifteen uh, Labour uh, MPs for stepping down. Mm. 11 uh, Conservative MPs setting down. And so there's a potential uh, where this isn't going to be like as simple for uh, Labour or the Tories to just have, well, I've been very good for my constituents, mm. vote me back in. That could be interesting. And so it, it could it be a, a big change for them. The, did you see Tim Farron's reply to uh, Caroline Flint's tweet where she said, uh, we've managed to get loads of great concessions and protection for workers' rights from out, out, out of Boris. Uh, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure he's as committed to that as he is to anything other than Boris Johnson. But uh, Tim Farron replied by saying, we used to put out messages like this when we were in the coalition, when we knew they didn't mean anything, um, and we were just doing it to make ourselves feel better. Uh, oh, I know, and it's like oh Christ! He just he just tweeted it out. That's it's like that's, that's that's behind the curtain. It. That is he just said it. <laughs> he just admitted that, and so in, in, uh, he's being much derided for saying it. People are going like, you know, that people died because of austerity. But fair play to him. That's no, yeah. he's being honest. I, that, I, that, I see that. I respect that I re- a lot I more. I respect the honesty. I don't, I don't respect them continuing to say, well, important. Difficult decisions had to be made, and it was the yeah. right thing at I the mean, time. Piss off all that. Right. wasn't, and all you need to do is look over somewhere like Portugal, because uh, austerity was something that was used in many different European countries mm. for the uh, after the crash. Um, but Portugal uh, didn't, and Portugal part of the pigs, which was uh, Portugal, Italy, Ireland, Spain, and Greece, uh, Greece and Spain, um, and they were the the 
proper fucked countries. Mm. We all know. Um, but Portugal, instead of doing austerity, they uh, actually put money back into the economy. Which is what Gordon Brown did uh, uh, initially. Yes. Uh, uh, sti- stimulus I mean, package and, and yeah. renationalizing renationaliz- the banks. Yes. The uh, argument is that uh, Gordon Brown, because everyone else followed suit, including America, from Gordon Brown, mm. for all of his many, many bad points with Brown, he did... He, he bottomed out the financial crash. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I've got... Uh, there's, there's a lot that I don't agree with Gordon Brown on, but I think he takes a lot more stick than he deserves. Now, you listen to him talk, and you're going, where the fuck were you, mate? On, on the other hand, now when you hear John Major talk, you think, this guy sounds... Uh, <laughs> he, this guy's up my street. <laughs> it's like, yeah, what's happened? It, it's amazing. If you look at, like, the, the early 90s Tories are now considered left-wing. Or at least... It, or at least the uh, it it, show, it shows how much the centre ground has moved because yes. when they say something which is which we all ought to agree on, um, it seems distinctly left wing. Yes, um, which yeah, which gives you a sense of where where the centre is. I, I had an interesting uh, conversation the other Thursday. I was out in uh, a pub with uh, a friend and some of his friends and a random bloke. He said, well, the thing is, what well, the, uh, the country is the country's always been slightly left to centre. And has it, though? Yeah. I, I'm pretty certain that's how India felt about, about <laughs> colonialism. <laughs> but what Bloody lefties turning up with their jumpers and sandals. Yeah, at what, at what point has this country been left of centre? I think people have confused. I, 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 saw, I saw someone who campaigned for the Tories complaining to Owen Jones about him... Ref- referring to her as being right wing and she she supports she openly supports the conservative party and uh, i've had friends say don't say right wing it's a slur i think we've got to the point where people think the left wing means nice yes and right wing means nasty which isn't the Whereas case when left wing people so when left wing people behave in a in a bullish or aggressive way they're hypocrites even though like i don't know if you're aware but the French and Russian revolutions were quite violent. Yes. So left-wing people historically have not always been nice. No. I mean, com- communism as it uh, as itself is quite barbaric. The, it's it's n- like this is what bothers me when people refer to um, the current Labour Party as far left. F- you know, when they tax the rich is far left. Far left is we kill you and your children, and we take everything you have, and we give it to the people we like. That's a far left position, yeah. And so anything to the right of that, I think we should not refer to as far left. And this is this is something from Chris Bett, who was on uh, a previous show. He's come up with the Chris perfect. Is is wonderful. He's come up with uh, the best way of explaining uh, the far right and the far left I've ever heard. Because it's he, he says it's not a. Uh, like uh, it's not round mm. it's not like you've got the left and the right you go along you've got far left and right but because the far left and the far right are quite the same is that the horseshoe theory you know, no but he what he's looking at is it's levels mm. it's not so you've got the the right and left but underneath you've got the far left and the far right it's there it's not a circle mm. and i think he's completely right on that aspect i don't i didn't follow that no, well then we'll move <laughs> on um, i'll talk to chris about it another time i do yeah he'll, he'll say it better than me uh, but the, the, it, it, it bothers me that, uh, that I think we, we have started to misunderstand the meaning of those terms, which is not that, not that left-wing things are always good or always right or right-wing things are always bad, but that these describe different ideological positions and economic systems. And yes. that those things do have some concrete social reality and... It, it, we shouldn't allow it to be too malleable. We can't. We, we, it's reasonable to say that right wing things are right wing, and yes. B- uh, and we can't feel there like, is oh, such a th- yeah. There is such a thing as right wing and left wing, and if you do vote for the conservatives, even if you just agree with everything that they say, that, uh, right. but don't vote for them, then you are right wing. And we all know there are lots of horrible left wing people, and there are lots of yeah. nice oh, right wing people. certainly. But I've, I've got a friend of mine who votes for Greens, doesn't agree with anything uh, that the Greens stand for, apart from climate change, and agrees with everything that the Tories say. Mm. They go, oh, I, 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 I vote Greens. Like, yeah, but just you're a Tory, mate. Yeah. Just because you don't vote for them, you agree with everything they say. Yeah. Makes you a right-wing Tory. I do think that... that I think that the left-wing position accords more closely with objective reality. And I think it's... Uh, I think most right-wing politics 
aren't morally defensible based on the way the real world works. And that's why I think left-wing politics is better than right-wing politics. But... I think they're all cunts. <laughs> well, your, your opinion on that is well documented. <laughs> Actually, and, uh, the, the, both the idea of uh, right wing and left wing, I find utterly fucking tedious. Well, I think that. Uh, about a lot of, oh, are we getting a vote? No, five minutes. Five minutes. minutes. Oh, right. Uh, have we got the uh, vote? No, not yet. Ah, oh, flipping. It's of not course, they're going to be on time. No, I, well, I, the other thing that gets me, and I don't think you fall into this category, but it does annoy me, is the left wing and right wing are all the same, or they're both equally bad. Because I think that. Oh, yeah, uh, they're, they're not. They're not equally bad. No. But what bothers me more is politicians. They're all the same, aren't they? Like they, they, they really couldn't be more different. Like there are big differences. I, no, because I, although I understand where you're coming from, I, I think as a fundamental, I, I don't think like I, I have uh, an idea that you should not be allowed to be a politician if you've never taken your own advice. <laughs> I think that's, I think that's an important fucking aspect, and I do not think that any politician has ever taken their own advice. I think they are there, and I think they start off, the majority of politicians start off going, I want to do something for people. Mm. And then either uh, it breaks down, or they realise what it is to be in power and to stay yeah. in power, and their morals go to the side. Because it's all well and good, because on, on, on everyone, everyone you look at, you can find points where they have slipped dramatically yes be it on uh, climate change be it with corbyn and syria what's happening over in syria now with uh, the turkish going in with uh, 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 assad using chemical weapons time and time and time again on his own people and you had corbyn silent about it saying we can't do anything we shouldn't do anything Turkey has shown now, with the death of the Kurdish people who stood by the US and the UK uh, uh, armies uh, to, def uh, to fight against ISIS, and we left them for fucking dead, the silence that we've had with regards to uh, beforehand that we shouldn't do anything, we should stay up, and Corbyn going, we shouldn't, we, we should just stay back, stay back. This is what happens, because, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Intervening. That's yeah, it. I was going to say. I, I, I must. I, I was. The reason I was skeptical of intervention there is that we were being asked to. We were being asked to intervene uh, against Assad, whereas a, a couple of like a year before we'd been asked. We we were trying to support Assad. No, yeah, but he, uh, he's using chemical weapons on his own fucking people. Oh, uh, uh, Assad's a monster, yeah, and the 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 sort of the lefty Corbynites who who are prepared to defend him, I have no time for. But I I'm skeptical not of the principle of intervention, but I'm skeptical of how good we are at it. Uh, no, I agree. I agree completely. So I think there are times where we think we've just got to get some of our bombs in there. It's got to do something. Yes, and we've been wrong. But there are. I, I'm not. Oh, yeah, I, I, I like wouldn't take a pacifist position of saying it's yeah. always a bad idea. Iraq, terrible. Uh, the Balkans war, good. Well, I mean, we, yeah, we do, we do seem to have come out of Kosovo with goodwill from the people yes. of Kosovo. Yes. Um, broadly speaking. Yeah. I, it's, uh, I mean, it's, that's going to go when we don't allow them into the EU, but then we won't get a chance anymore to say no. Because uh, oh, oh that, that's uh, that's the thing with the EU that's going on at the moment uh, with all the uh, talks yesterday after mm. Boris fucked off and early yesterday morning, uh, um, Macron uh, and a couple of others voted against allowing North Macedonia and um, Albania uh, to start talks to becoming members of the EU. Really. Because they want to change uh, what we consider uh, allowing people in and the rules that we have. Mm. And there's another, there's a number of other countries uh, like Kosovo, Serbia, Montenegro, who are looking to become members of the EU. And that has been held back because mm. of uh, people like France currently in the EU. For all the talk of Brexit and everything else, that's one of the only things that they all agree on. Um, 
the rest of the EU and uh, they talk about things like money, uh, how to grow the EU and everything else. All of that stuff is uh, being held because Germany and France don't agree on a lot. Mm. So uh, a lot of the fundamentals well, of the EU is not flying. I mean, flying. It, is, it is very difficult to get French people to agree about anything. I mean, isn't it? I, the only thing they agree on is setting fire to fiats. Uh, <laughs> love to set fire to fiats. That's one of their big things. Right. Um, have you got anything to plug? Um, no, I haven't heard to plug. I just want to end on a bit of anti-French bigotry. Um, I'm, I'm fine. I'm hope. fine standing there. Yep, I've, I've got no qualms in ending there. Um, uh, are you sure you've got nothing to plug? I mean, I will put all of your uh, uh, details and everything Please, up uh, no, on I, the. Um, no, I. Um, it, what is it? It's October. I'm trying to write a new show. I've got nothing. Um, so I'm doing nothing. <laughs> I'm just desperately trying to write jokes. Doing any gigs soon? Um, I'm an angel comedy tonight, but I don't think this show's going to be out by then. No, no, it's not going to be. Uh, yes, I, I am doing gigs, but nobody needs to come to them. No one needs It'll to come to them. Cool. Um, I'm going to be bringing out uh, my sh uh, fourth album soon. You recorded it for Next Up yesterday. Uh, Is that right? I, uh, Next Up said that they were going to come. I don't know if they did. Oh, okay. Uh, so I'm going to send it over to them uh, and see if they want to pick it up. Okay. Um but I do have a bit about how uh, comedy is just sexual predators, so I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm not sure how much they, they are going to want to pick that up. Um, but either which way, I'm going to bring out as an oh, album because well, I bring so out all the you others. You recorded it though. Yeah, no, yeah, of course. Brilliant. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. And so I just so need it's to in the can. Yeah, so I just need to make sure I I do it as tracks because it's one of the only people who actually buys my albums always wants it in tracks nice um, <laughs> you've got to please the fan well i didn't i didn't do it for a wheel die cunts and they say well can you just go through and just do track numbers <laughs> for me so I'll, I'll fucking do it I'll, I'll i'll edit it into the tracks did you ever um the dvd for blue velvet very quickly um bec uh, was it blue velvet on mulholland drive when they started saying oh david lynch you've got to put uh, chapter headings in and he went you can't have chapter headings on one of my films you can't <laughs> skip to one scene what are you talking about <laughs> um that's not exactly how he sounds but it's decent uh, and so the, so the chapters are completely arbitrary with completely meaningless names and some of them are like a second long and some of them go on for 10 minutes and i just like that <laughs> So you All should right. do that. Uh, David Lynch, yeah. Right, news that uh, we didn't get to. It was the Queen's speech this week. Ah, piss off. It's piss absolu off. Kill absolutely oh, pointless. Oh, sorry, I forgot we can't edit this. Uh, Don't kill the Queen. Absolutely pointless. Um, and what else have we got? Uh, we've got uh, mocked-up videos depicting uh, Trump uh, stabbing and shooting his political opponents uh, and media <laughs> was reportedly shown in a meeting of the president's supporters at his Miami um, resort. Of course, they're claiming that they don't agree with it, but at the same time, they do. Um, <laughs> female Labour MPs uh, have asked for a meeting with uh, party bosses over new reselection uh, rules. Uh, that they have uh, that has seen four women, uh, but only one man triggered, uh, and at risk of losing uh, the party nomination in the general election. Ashley, yep. I need to use the toilet. I really need a wee, and I can't Go. wait to the end of the Fuck podcast. Off. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, one in three councils are using computer algorithms to help make decisions about benefit claims. And final piece of news is uh, researchers have said that uh, our brains do their best to keep us from uh, dwelling on our own inevitable demise. So hopefully that allows you to think of death more. I want to, fact, I want to thank uh, my guests, Alec Beckett King and Jimmy James Jones can go fuck himself. Uh, goodbye. <laughs>